Hello, my name is Tim Lawrence. I'm the Edexcel Psychology Subject Advisor, and this video is part two in a series of three which summarise the training that we recently delivered to A-level psychology teachers focusing on extended response questions. So I'll launch straight into it. There's going to be some um, exemplar responses that we look at, and I'll explain the marks awarded to them. If you're not able to pause the video and actually read them clearly enough on screen, you'll be able to download them uh, from the description of this video. So the first thing we look at here is two different approaches for answering those extended response questions that require AO1 and AO3 skills. So the evaluate, assess and to what extent essay questions worth eight marks or more. And what our examiners call the integrated approach is where AO1 knowledge and understanding and AO3 evaluation are combined into the same paragraph. So you could use a framework like point, elaborate, and then evaluate. Um, lots of teachers use a structure called peel to help students structure their paragraphs, point, evidence, evaluation, and then link back to the question. And that link back to the question is basically the same thing as an interim conclusion or a judgment. Um, this approach may be more effective for studies, our examiners say. There's no right or wrong way to answer any question in an Edexcel A-level exam, though. So students can use their judgment and whichever method they prefer. Um, this can make the logical chains of reasoning that the mark schemes look for a little bit easier to construct because the evaluation is following on immediately from the A01 point that it uh, relates to. But when it comes to theories and treatments, the separate approach might work a bit better. So this is what an integrated essay would look like. Uh, conclusions or judgments, which are very similar to conclusions, are, as we've previously mentioned, very important to get into the upper mark bands for those evaluate, assess and to what extent questions. You don't need an overall conclusion as long as there have been many conclusions to the paragraphs on the way through if you're using the integrated approach or either approach in fact, uh, but an overall conclusion can be quite a good idea just to make sure that that conclusion or judgment is uh, is clearly in there. One of the things we've discussed is whether that needs to be, be new content, and this is a bit of a complicated one to answer. Um, students shouldn't just uh, resp uh, kind of repeat um, comments that they've already made in many conclusions as they've gone along. There's no point doing that. But then again, it's not necessary to bring in completely new evaluation points either. So really, they should be looking, if they give an overall conclusion, to come up with a, a kind of summative concluding comment that perhaps ties together points they've already made, but to give something uh, new. Now, the uh, integrated style, we've got an example of here. And I will um, oh, sorry, this is not the answer. This is just the, the point. So Sharif's study, um, uh, you'll be familiar with, um, I think, teachers very much now. So here's a, a simple A01 point. Uh, it's in a natural setting, uh, elaboration uh, to make some sense of that and show that the student really understands what that means. Uh, the evaluation point that then relates to that is where the A03 comes into this, this integrated paragraph. And then this would be an example of a conclusion, a mini conclusion or a linking statement. So here is that example. Um, and you can pause the video now if you'd like to read it or download and, and look in the, in the PDF. And what you can see hopefully here, if you have paused to read it, is that we've got some A01 content here, followed by uh, evaluation. That repeats here. The blue is the A01. The uh, yellow is the AO3 evaluation that follows it, and that is uh, repeated throughout the answer in this way. Uh, so I'll give you now uh, the mark and a little bit of justification for that. So this was actually awarded five out of eight, by no means a bad answer. And if if students can kind of consistently kind of hit that level throughout, then they're on track for at least an A grade. Um, the, the AO1 is actually stronger here. That's at level three accurate knowledge and, uh, of the procedure and results, not quite thorough enough for level four, the top mark band. But this goes to show that actually you don't need to write that much, particularly for the AO1 uh, to get into a, a decent mark band. The AO3 is not actually as strong, despite being a bit longer. It's level two. Uh, there's some mostly accurate points, although they're at times superficial and underdeveloped. Okay, moving on then and having a quick look at the separated approach. 
This is where, as the name suggests, the AO1 and AO3 come in in separate blocks. And for theories and treatments, our examiners suggest that actually this might uh, be uh, an easier, more effective approach for getting the highest marks. Um, but students are, are welcome to use the integrated approach for those questions as well. And they can still get the top marks with that approach. Um, can be more logical in terms of chains of reasoning um, and balancing um, that, that, especially for the longer questions where you need to write more AO3 than you do AO1. So for 16 and 20 markers uh, without context, there are more marks for AO3. That's an important thing for students to be aware of. And that might be easier uh, with a separated approach for them to get that balance right. But for studies, it might be more difficult for them to um, do that, particularly the, the chains of reasoning where they're linking ideas together. So it might look something like this in terms of its overall structure. Again, we have an example which you might like to pause and uh, have a read of and think what mark you would give it. This is how I've um, categorised it as AO1 followed by AO3. And I've just picked out a few useful phrases for this uh, strong answer. So the, the little phrase here, a strength of social impact theory is that, really clearly uh, highlights for the examiner that we're starting to evaluate. And then we've got the word however that crops up a couple of times here, which shows that a counter argument is being introduced. And here we've got a balanced evaluation with pros and cons, if you like. It doesn't matter really that there's only one strength because that has been developed in detail. Arguably, there's a bit of unnecessary information about the, the study in that first uh, strength. But then we've got two shorter counter arguments. And overall, that, that is a balanced conclusion. And then in conclusion, flags that there's a, a short but useful final conclusion there. And this was given, pause if you uh, don't, want to know yet. <laughs> this was given 8 out of 8, um, level 4 for both the knowledge and understanding, the AO1, and for the evaluation, which was judged to be uh, developed and logical. Okay, so um, the second part of this video looks at key questions and issues and debates. We've got a couple more exemplar responses to look at um, on the issues and debates topic, I believe, in a minute. So there's a key question within each topic. As um, hopefully you're aware, it can be chosen by the teacher or the student. So this is quite useful for students to know if they don't remember the exact wording of the key question, that, that doesn't really necessarily hold them back at all because uh, the examiner won't know what key question uh, the teacher chose as long as the question that the student uh, addresses allows them to, to hit the assessment objectives, which we'll cover in a second. So there's suitable examples in the spec, as you will uh, most likely know, but you don't have to use them. And they can be directly assessed on paper one and paper two at A level and on both the AS papers. So uh, in other words, they can students can be asked to write down their key question and then discuss it. So what should candidates include? So important for them to understand how the AO1 works here, because it's a little bit different. The, the AO1 knowledge and understanding is all about the key question. And it needs to be about relevance to today's society and how the issue, whatever it is, affects society as a whole, people in society. So facts and key knowledge about that issue, which is nothing to do actually with the, the rest of the, uh, the specification and the A-level course. That's the AO1 in this case. Whereas depending on the question asked, it will be AO2 and discuss if it's more of an application question or this could be a longer, like a 16 mark assess question, then the um, the AO3 or AO2 will be all about the links that the student can make to the, the theory that they've learned. So here is the first of our uh, key questions to have a look at. Uh, pause if you'd like to consider what mark you give it before I tell you. So this one was uh, awarded four marks out of eight. And the AO1 and AO2 are both judged to be at level two out of, out of the four levels in the mark scheme. Uh, mostly accurate knowledge and understanding. However, this is not well developed and lacks specific detail and depth. And for the evaluation, superficial application, this is an example of, um, of the psychological concepts and theories relating to eyewitness testimony. Most of the content is limited to the link to eyewitness testimony and the key question. 
it's so it's, it's limited uh, as opposed to really effective uh, evaluation so uh, moving on and we've got uh, this final one to look at and this video is almost finished so pause again if you'd like to consider this one and actually despite being shorter this is a considerably uh, stronger response so it's a good example of, of how you can you can pick up marks on an eight marker without writing a great deal and um, both the AO1 and AO2 are judged to be uh, at the top uh, level four here accurate uh, thorough knowledge and understanding about the issues surrounding mental health in the workplace including days off lost production and the effects on workers whereas the uh, evaluation and uh, deals with unrealistic goals low pay and those key issues and that was awarded eight out of eight so uh, key advice um, from our examiners here Remember that it's all about society, how does it affect individuals, society as a whole. Try to use a range of theories and concepts um, in the, the application um, or evaluation part of the answer and make sure that the key question that they have going into the exam or you have if you're a student watching this allows you to, to do those things. Talk about society and make links to the um, psychology content that you've covered. So issues and debates. Um, Paper one and paper three both have extended response questions uh, about these, and there's some subtle differences which are explained here on this slide between how paper one and paper three assess that. Uh, here we have an issues and debates uh, question. And again, pause if you'd like to um, decide how many marks that you would give this. So this one was marked as four out of eight. And uh, level two, again, for both um, of the um, assessment objectives for AO1 and for AO3. Uh, you can gain AO1 credit here for either describing the debate or showing knowledge of the of learning theories. Um, so they're quite generous, the examiners, in terms of what they will give AO1 credit for in this type of question. AO3 has to be um, for judgments relating to the debate, assessing the value of it being reductionist or not. Um, okay, and so uh, final one uh, for this video. Again, pause if you'd like to consider how many marks you would give this. Okay, and this one again is a, a stronger one. Um, so hopefully it's useful for you seeing a kind of middle, middle mark and a top mark one for each one. This was given seven out of eight and um, it was the AO3 that's actually the stronger of the two here. So it's top level. Um, for uh, the evaluation, uh, the assessment, uh, I should say, and level three for the AO1. Uh, AO1 provides breadth of knowledge about the topic, um, knowledge of a variety of areas within the learning theory topic. However, it misses the top um, band for the AO1 as some of the description is less well explained, such as the operant conditioning section. And there's also a lack of AO1 knowledge about what the debate is really about, such as definitions of the concepts within the debate. So there's a good tip that emerges from that feedback, which is that when you're writing about issues and debate students, then um, make sure that you show knowledge of that debate and, and you think about any kind of key terms that you've, that you've been uh, looking at and use those. So final advice to finish off this one. Um, a variety of content from different parts of the specification for issues and debates questions. Um, explanation of how it all links to the debate, both sides of the argument, that, that idea of balance, and uh, mini judgments and conclusions are recommended rather than saving it all up for a final conclusion. Remember that for eight markers, it will always be four marks of AO1 and four marks of AO3 or AO2 if it's a discuss question. As the previous video uh, in this series um, explained, discuss does not require any evaluation or conclusions, but the other command words do. But for a 16 or a 20 mark question, you need to focus more on the evaluation. And again, uh, the, the first video in this series goes into that in more detail general strategies for, uh, for teaching essay writing in the classroom. Uh, so the use of templates, which are basically uh, like those things we looked at earlier in this video, where you could give students um, a kind of framework, um, like uh, get them to consider what they would put in each paragraph in terms of AO1 and AO3. Round robin activities where uh, students each write like uh, the 
the point sentence, for example, of a different um, paragraph for an essay and then rotate those bits of paper around themselves and add to each other's points can be quite a nice activity to get them to think about the structuring of paragraphs. Um, peer marking, marking each other's work, perhaps anonymized, um, perhaps comparing to a model answer and uh, thinking about what's uh, what's good about it and what could be improved. Uh, real candidate responses and our examiners suggest making use of the um, responses that appear in our examiner reports. They're fantastically useful. You don't always have a, a strong example, um, but if you go back through the years, you'll find plenty of uh, examples of, of strong responses in there and less strong responses. And it's really good to get students to think about why they do or don't pick up marks. And finally, difficult for students to do, but really valuable is to um, use some of the, the training that we've gone through here, including the, the final video in, in this series, um, which may still be coming soon, um, but do, do subscribe to this channel if it's, uh, if it's not there now when you're looking for it, I'll make it over the next few days. And that's gonna look in more detail at how mark schemes are constructed. And if you get students to actually go through that process, come up with their own questions, come up with their own mark schemes, that really helps them to get inside the mind of an examiner and um, understand what they're looking for. So the final uh, video in this series will look at mark scheme construction and then application to some more exemplar responses. Um, thank you very much for watching to the end of this one.